Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you, True Vine Apostolic Fellowship, and everyone else who's out there who has uh, who's tuned in tonight. God bless you, and thank you for tuning in to Friday Night Words of Encouragement. I'm sitting here in my side yard, uh, pointing toward my neighbors here. They have some brand new sheep for their 4-H project, and my other neighbor beyond that, his dog is raising a ruckus, but there's a breeze, the weather is good, and I just feel blessed of God. So let me get right into it. When I was thinking about, uh, about be, uh, encouragement, I was thinking about when I first came to the Lord and how I heard the phrase, praise the Lord anyhow. Praise the Lord anyhow. Well, I was a little cynical and I said, what is that all about? I didn't understand it. Uh, I eventually figured it out, of course, and, and it means that, listen, no matter what your circumstances, um, whether life trips you up or whether life lifts you up, uh, whether your circumstances are good or whether your circumstances are bad, we are not going to let our circumstances dictate how we feel toward God. We're not going to let our circumstances dictate how we're going to have a day. And in all things, we're going to go ahead and we're going to praise the Lord. And so I ask you a question tonight. Is there any time when we shouldn't praise the Lord? Psalm chapter 34 and verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice forevermore. And I'm reminded of that fact when I think about Acts chapter 16. And 20, uh, verse 25, when Paul and Silas were, were locked up in a Roman prison, well, guarded by Romans, but it was in Jerusalem. But in any case, they were locked up in prison, and they were put in stocks. And no doubt, they were beaten up and manhandled before they got there. And as they came in and they were locked down, the Bible says in verse 25, that at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. I wonder if you would let that impact you there for a second. The Bible says that at the midnight time, at the darkest time of their experience, they were hauled into prison, they were beaten, they were placed into stocks, and yet they went ahead and sang. They weren't shy about it. They said, we're going to praise God anyhow. And it says that the prisoners heard them. Instead of whining, instead of crying, they said, you know what? We are going to praise the Lord. And they were praising, their, praising the Lord with their voice. The Bible says in Psalm 98 and verse 4, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make, all the, make a loud noise and rejoice and sing with praise. I want to ask you right now, how has your praise been lately? Has coronavirus gotten a hold of your tongue lately? Has the situation around it and the situation you're in, has it been dictating your mood? There was an old Southern Gospel song that said, Don't let the la battle steal your praise. Don't let the battle steal your praise. It's amazing how little it takes to steal our praise. And so with that, how does that relate to Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17? Or Habakkuk as, as I introduced. The Bible tells us that Habakkuk was a prophet in Judah. And he'd already witnessed the northern kingdom being taken advantage of by the Chaldeans. And now the Chaldeans were, were going to take in the, the, the people of Judah. And he was perplexed by the situation. He couldn't understand it. And the Bible introduces in verse 1, it says, the burden of Habakkuk. And he goes on in verse 2 to say, Lord, how long is this going to go on? Hello, is anybody hearing me? How long is this going to keep on going on? When are you going to do something, Lord? And, the, and Habakkuk goes on to say in verse 3 and 4, he says, you know what? Why don't you judge your people for their sins? Because you see, the Lord was going to judge the people of Judah with the forces from Chaldea. 
And Habakkuk couldn't understand that. He said, why? Why would you choose a wicked nation? Why would you choose people who are more wicked than your own? Why don't you just leave it in house? You see, you can kind of see why Habakkuk is a little bit confused in all of this. But God is up to something. When God's, when you're down to nothing, God's up to something. And in chapter 2, God makes Habakkuk to understand that what he was seeing there was a picture, a vision of a future tribulation time. This is the time we're in right now. Amen? Not the great tribulation, but we're, we're feeling the sorrows, the pangs. And so God wanted Habakkuk to understand that that what he needed to do in verse 4, chapter 2, verse 4, verse four is he says, Trust me, I have faith, I know what I'm doing. Again, when you're down to nothing, God's up to something. And he wanted Habakkuk to see with an eternal vision. He wanted him to see the end from the beginning or the end from where they were at. And he said, there's coming a time in verse 14, it says, where the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. What he's saying to you and me is that no matter what's going on now, there's going to be a time when God rules and reigns and it's going to be perfection. God is up to something. He goes on to say in verse 20, that God, fill, God, God still is on the throne. He's still in his temple. And chapter 3 is where Habakkuk really begins to understand what's going on. And Habakkuk goes on to say in, in the last couple of verses, he, it, look at Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17. He says, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, there shall be no herd in the stalls. That's what he says in verse 17. If I could translate that to today's time, he would say something along the lines of this. He said, he would say, though my heart health is failing and I'm having trouble making ends meet, and though Wall Street is crashing and my 401k is going down, and even though my job is being threatened and there's no paper in my home, he says, verse 18, notice what he says, yet will I rejoice in the Lord I will joy in the God of my salvation. Now we're in tough times, but Habakkuk could see that the Chaldeans were going to come in. They were going to kill and rape and pillage. He could see it. And yet he says, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. The Lord is my strength. God is, is my salvation. That's what we've got to have. And so I'm here to give you an encouragement today. But it's not an encouragement of lay back and just reap the fruit of God's, of God's blessing. No, what I'm telling you is that you and I, we need to rejoice in the face of our circumstances. We need to rejoice no matter what's going on. And notice he says two times in verse 18, I will. But I want you to look at verse 19. It says, the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon high places. Verse 18 has two I wills. But verse 19 says three times, God will. You've got to say I will before God will because you've got to apprehend his promises, not understand everything but you got to apprehend his promises even while you wait on him and notice what he says he the word Habakkuk the name Habakkuk means to cling and Habakkuk was clinging to God for three reasons number one he said the Lord is my strength the second reason the Lord was his security why he said he's gonna make him like like hinds feet in other words, a hind is a little deer-like animal, and it was known for being sure-footed. If you believe on God, God is going to make your steps sure. And then thirdly, he says, 
God is my success. He will make me to walk upon high places. I need to let you know tonight that God is going to make sure that you end up in a higher place. You may be in the valley right now, but the Bible says, I will look unto the Lord, unto the hills, whence cometh my help. Amen. Let me tell you a secret. God wants you to be joyful. God wants you to have strength. I know that there are some Christians who, who look as if they smiled. They would probably hurt their face. And you got to cut them a break. Maybe they were baptized in vinegar. I don't know. But you have to... You have to have joy because the prisoners are out there right now waiting. The prisoners who are bound up in the things of this world, whose only hope is the things of this world, they need somebody, and that somebody is you. And I want you to remember what it says in Habakkuk 3 and 18. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He's waiting for you to rejoice in him. Maybe you're having trouble keeping a job. Maybe you were just getting in a groove and now all of a sudden, boom, everything is falling over. I want you to know God is going to make you to sit in high places. He's going to make your path sure and he will be your strength. God bless you and I hope you have a great weekend in Jesus' name.